it's, it's such a lonely job and you don't have colleagues constantly giving you, um, you know, you don't have morning tea together or you don't have colleagues sort of congratulating you on closing a deal or curing a patient of cancer or whatever you're doing, you know, you're on your own. I mean, as a little girl, I wanted to be a, a, a nurse. <laughs> and I, I'm terrible. I do still tell people sometimes I'm a nurse, just to sort of, you know. Um, so, they, so they'll tell me their secrets. Um, <laughs> and um, then I, yes, I, I played the cello for years, and so I had this idea that I would become perhaps an orchestral cellist. But when I went away down to university in Christchurch, I sort of dropped that and d just did a general uh, degree in English and history. And then I, was, I worked as an actress for a few years, but I, you know, I, I, I was by that stage writing plays and um, won the Bruce Mason Playwrights Award when I was in my early 20s and with that money headed off to Australia. And because I was then sort of removed from my kind of milieu here, which had been actors and directors, and I, I, that was when I started writing prose and, write, and wrote my first novels and things. So. Um, I didn't tell people I was a writer or even put it on my census form or anything like that until I had published three books. Um, somebody once said that the short story is the most perfect form of revenge and um, I would agree with that. I mean I certainly have written stories about ex-lovers and um, people who have really fucking annoyed me and, and it's made me feel a whole lot better and I haven't made any effort to disguise them at all. but. <laughs> it's not something I do very often. <laughs> you know, I, th I think it's, um, it's, it's not a good idea to set off as a young person thinking you're going to become a writer. I think that it's something that, um, that will fall into place later if it's going to. You, know. you, you have to go out and, and, and live, you know, drive taxis, take the slow boat to China, go to university and don't study writing. Go to university and study Hebrew or, or, or history or get a medical degree. I mean, now you sort of meet people who look about 12 who tell you that they're writers. And I sort of think, well, good luck to you, you know. Some days when you sit down at your desk, you know, it, you'll get to a point where you know you're just flogging a dead horse and you might as well give up and go out for a walk or bake a cake or do the shopping or, you know, visit a friend or, you know, there'll be days when you know it's just not going to fall into place and other days when you sit down and there's just this lovely sort of scooping piece where, where everything just falls away and you just, you, you, you are just a, a servant to the story. When a book is finished, when you know it's finished and you, 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 you sort of, you know, reach the point where um, you know it can go no further. I mean, you either, I find, I either experience a sense of enormous elation or, or I, I know when I finished Belief, um, which was a, is a huge novel, so, you know, nearly 600 pages long. <laughs> and um, when I finished the first draft, I, I wept and wept and wept, you know, because <laughs> I don't really know why, I was probably deranged. But with the shag incident, I didn't feel like that. I felt enlivened and silly. You know, I felt as if I had heard a, a, a really good joke. You know, reviews are tricky because you know you. The healthiest thing to do is to just um, take no notice of them at all, unless they've been written by someone who who you respect. So, I mean, I know a lot of read writers don't even read their reviews. I read them the minute they come out. I want to read them. And when you have a review, even if, it, if it's not a glowing review, as long as it's an intelligent review, you know, that's what you want. You want somebody to have responded to the book, you know, um, not just sort of said, you say, well, this is a good book, you know. When I went, when my first book was published with Random House, they have a clause in their contracts where they say the writer undertakes to do whatever the publisher deems necessary to promote the book. So you say yes and you do the regional radio stations and the newspapers and the magazines. And I always feel like a wanker when I go and do these things. I feel like a wanker now. <laughs>
I, I've sort of been hired to write the, the screenplay, or the first draft of it at least, and um, this is where I always think my background as an actress comes in handy, because I can just think, well, now I'm putting on another hat, and I leave any emotional commitment to that book behind. I mean, I, start, I started out as a playwright, so it was quite a natural progression to want to write film, but I think if you're kind of burning with the desire to tell stories, it you know, you hear, of, you know, we were saying earlier, hear, hear these stories of people spending 12 years to get a film up. Well, you know, I'd die if I had to do that. I, I want to be able to tell new stories. He's rolling, did you know that? Are you rolling? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm staring at the red light here. <laughs>